This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and Happy New Year. It's 2019, a year filled with adventure and lots of interesting topics here on Out and About, which is held every other week on the Think Tech live streaming network series. I am your host, Winston Welch, and joining us today, we are going to like, do like we every, every other week, we explore a variety of people, topics, events, and organizations uh, in the city, the state, and our nation, and uh, it's all live in the studio, so sometimes you know, we make mistakes and other times it's really natural. Mostly it is because my guests are always excellent. They're, they're experts in their fields. Like my guest today, I'm very pleased to have back Sean Hamamoto, who is actually executive secretary from the Honolulu Neighborhood Commission office. And we're gonna talk about the upcoming neighborhood board elections and the neighborhood board system in general. So welcome to the show today, or welcome back, Sean. Thank you, Winston. I'm so happy to be here again. Yeah, well, I, I, I appreciate you, uh, your, your office reaching out again um, to remind everybody that these very important neighborhood board elections are coming up. The deadline is coming up. Yes. I want to get it out there right away. It's, we, everyone should apply by February 15th if they're interested in running on the board. Uh, yes, the, um, February 15th is the deadline for candidate registration as well as voter registration. As well as voter registration. Yes. Okay, so you can see it there on the on the blue screen that it ends on Friday at mid uh, just before a minute before midnight on February fifteenth. So that's for people to vote in the neighborhood board elections. Correct. Um, I just want to clarify that for people that voted in the most general, uh, most recent general election we had, are automatically registered to vote in the neighborhood board elections. Okay. Now, for people who perhaps didn't vote in the previous general election and they want to register for the neighborhood board elections, that's when uh, they need to register by that February 15th date. But okay. if you voted already, you're, you're good to go. Or maybe people that didn't vote in the, in the, in the national elections for whatever reasons or just have moved here or yes, something. And exactly. They, they don't think that, uh, yeah, so this is a way for them to get on. That's an important mm -hmm. uh, deadline then. So it's for February candidates. February 15th. And, and for voter registration. And voter registration. And I think it's important to note that these elections are held online for the most part. Yes, it's a primarily an online uh, election. The Neighborhood Commission back in 2009 uh, made a decision to go with a primary sy uh, online system. And this was mostly done as a cost savings measure. Mm -hmm. um, as you can imagine, um, uh, the commission was spending tens of thousands of dollars each election just on postage and, and, and envelopes. Yeah. So we're saving a lot of money there. Um, but we are aware that not everybody may have access to a computer or be um, computer um, savvy at this point. So we do have a mail-in option. So for those, although we would prefer people to go paperless and do it online, if people really want to, they can request a traditional mail-in ballot from our office. And would they, would they be able to do that at the same time that they register with your office to, uh, to vote? Uh, no, because the actual um, passcodes for the ballots will go out in April. Okay. So, but for now, it's we're just registering uh, one candidate and voters. Okay. So, if mm -hmm. it's Mrs. Smith or Mr. Sato, they say I don't want to vote on the computer. I want a piece of paper. Oh, yeah. They need. To, can they? They still have to call your office yes. by February fifteenth. Uh, no, actually, for that, for them um, to actually request the ballot, um, that doesn't happen until um, gosh, March or April, where they okay, can do that. Okay, a little bit later. So, yes, if you yes. want a paper ballot, you're good for a little bit longer. Yes, yes. Well, I'm curious, what percent of people actually request a paper ballot in this day and age? Oh gosh, um, in our last election, it was very low. I, I want to say under 10 percent. I, I don't have the exact figures, but it was low. Um, I do want to point out, though, that. Uh, in our last 2017 elections, I was very, very happy to see that we had the largest turnout, voter turnout, since the elections went online in 2009. Uh, we had about 20,000 people vote. Okay. Um, now, just to be uh, clear though, that is a far way off from before the elections went online. So just brief history, prior to the 2009 elections, before they went online, uh, we had about 40,000 voters okay. participate. When the elections went online in 2009, there was a, a, a major drop, and I think that had a lot to do with people getting used to the, the technology and so forth. So the, the voter participation went down to 10,000 mm. in 2009. Mm. And over the years, as people are getting more familiar with it, it's been building. So like I said, in our last one, 2017, we were up to 20,000. 
Well, how do how do people even know uh, that that these e elections exist besides mm -hmm. watching our wonderful think tech show? Mm -hmm. How how do people know that that mm -hmm. that they could be on the board or that they're these are the candidates or how to vote? Do they, do you send out actually a physical piece of paper with? candidates uh, profiles or that sort of thing? You know, well, we do have candidate profiles on our website. Okay. Um, so once you register, um, and the uh, application is very simple. It's basically your name, your address, some contact information. You have the option to attach a photo so people can put a face to the name. Okay. Um, and you also have an option of just writing a brief, you know, synopsis of, you know, your background or why you'd like to, why you'd like to run. And we post all of that on online. How do you get to see. and how well, how do you get the news out? Is it is it and, you know, an advertiser? That, or? You 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 bring up a very very good point. Um, you know this system has been around since 1973 for yeah. over 40 years, yeah. and so many people don't know that it, it exists. Yeah. Um, you know I always say I wish I had the budget where I could do prime time commercials during you know the evening news. I I don't. Uh, so we with what resources we do have we try to to do the best to get the word out. So that's using um, our social media. Yeah. Um, we also just uh, old fashioned boots to the ground. We go out into the community. We do community outreach. We do presentations. Actually, um, I have a team right now as we speak. They're out at Leeward Community College, okay. you know, informing students, trying to get people signed up. So yeah, just getting out into the community, we do our best. And uh, maybe it's uh, for, for people who watch Olelo, who people mm -hmm. who care about a lot of stuff, they do, and I, a lot of people watch Olelo. Yes. And, you know, people tell me, "Oh, I saw you on Olelo," and I said, "Was I, was I being interviewed? Was I interviewing mm -hmm. someone?" Or you know, narrow it down a little mm -hmm. bit because I'm on TV a fair amount. But the top uh, five shows, for example, in Think Tech, move over to Olelo, and the neighborhood boards, the huge majority of them, are actually on Olelo. Correct. And so mm -hmm. people can see. Uh, I, I don't know if they can go back in time, but they probably can to some degree um, and find out what happened at their neighborhood boards or to mm -hmm. find out what's hap what are topics at other neighborhood boards that mm -hmm. maybe would be germane for their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy watching um, those as well to see how their boards are. For example, I, well, I went in person to Waikiki's last week and they applauded after every speaker came up, after every firefighter mm -hmm. and um, a city councilor. And I thought, I thought it, was, it was a nice touch. My board does not do that. Mm -hmm. and, as a full disclaimer, I am on Neighborhood Board 5, uh, which is Kapahulu, Diamond Head, Waikiki. And we've got 15 members there. And mm -hmm. I think like every uh, community, these are pretty passionately yes. dedicated people to their neighborhoods mm -hmm. and um, uh, concerned with uh, the, the, the small kind stuff, really, because that's what happens mm -hmm. in, these, in these neighborhood boards. Now, have you served on a board yourself before you became the executive secretary of the, of the neighborhood board uh, office? Yes, you know, I was uh, briefly a member of the downtown Chinatown neighborhood board number 13 mm -hmm. uh, from 2011 to 2013. Mm -hmm. um, I really loved that experience. Um, but uh, beyond that, you know, I think the first neighborhood board I ever attended was back in 1999. Oh, um, I was working for the state senate at the time, so you know, just to go as a representative. Okay. But I can say from that very first meeting I went to in '99, I fell in love with the system. Mm -hmm. I thought it was wonderful. Um, just in one place on that one evening, you had, you know, so many representatives, your officials, you could talk to face to face. Tell people uh, uh, mm -hmm. who may not be familiar with sure. this. Who do who comes to these neighborhood board meetings? Okay, so um, you know. Um, Regularly, you will have uh, representatives from the police department, yep. fire department, board of water supply, uh, usually a governor's representative, a mayor's representative, and also your city council member, state representative, state senators. Um, and are, if there are any big issues that are going on in your community where government agencies are involved, like say the Department of Transportation Services, they'll usually be in attendance to give updates as well. So it's a great place where the community in one place, you can have everybody in one room. These uh, meetings are recorded, if not by video, uh, via minutes, so it's transparent and on the record. Uh, yeah. It's really a great system. Yeah, it is It is a great system. And, and, and for people that say, oh, that neighborhood board, they, they don't do anything. You know, they're just, mm -hmm. it's just there just to have people griping and, and it, doesn't, it doesn't really go anywhere. What, what, what would you say to that? Uh, well, I would say, I would invite people um, with those opinions to actually um, watch the neighborhood boards and, and you'll find that they actually are very relevant and they actually do do a lot. Um, now, it's very important to note that, you know, per the city charter, these boards are primarily an advisory board, um, you know, with no quote-unquote official approving authority. Mm -hmm. However, it is a fact that many of our city agencies 
rely on the advice of the neighborhood boards in implementing policy or you know projects. Um, one good example are park closures. You know, mm -hmm. all of our communities have parks. Certain communities, unfortunately, have had issues with vandal vandalism and illicit activities. So what certain communities are choosing to do is to close their parks at night for certain hours so that HPD can legally enforce. Um, now, in order for these park closures to happen, it's part of the park's process to have this vetted by the neighborhood board. Yeah. So I would say the neighborhood board is entirely um, relevant in, in these types of situations. And I, I think it's important to note that, that we can have um, neighborhood boards joining together for, on different topics. Okay. So there might be a permitted interaction group or uh, uh, for, mm -hmm. there might be a, um, like mm -hmm. the Alawai golf course, you know, uh, the top mm -hmm. golf issue that we have three areas under, uh, impacted, which is my mine, Waikiki, and Mo'ilili. So we can come together and talk about these things, or maybe if they're going to do this Alawai watershed, it would also mm -hmm. impact all of those and, and Man Manoa, Manoa as well, Palolo. Palolo and others. So we can come together on these and I would love to see more of that as time goes by actually. And that's one thing I've been very happy to see during my time here. Um, I think another good success story that you, you are aware about is the uh, mo moped noise bill, which um, started with the um, McCulley Neighborhood Board. And you know, it, and this was going on for years about the uh, unregulated moped noise and yep. how it was a nuisance to the community. So they ended up networking with boards all over the island, coming together, and as a result, you we have a bill that was not only passed but signed by Governor Ige that has become law. And again, this all started at the neighborhood board grassroots and, level. I, and it is a grassroots level. It's mm -hmm. where people. And I for there is no perfect system, right? Sure. This is where people come, and sometimes one of the representatives might be absent. Usually, in mine, they're always there, or their mm -hmm. representative is there yes. to listen to concerns, to write them down, and to get back to people mm -hmm. for the huge majority. Or if we have a concern, they will get back to us, mm -hmm. which I, I really appreciate. Um, uh, it's not a perfect system, but it's it's our basic system to bleed on up. And I think mm -hmm. if we look at our city council today, and a lot of our legislators, including our mayor, started on the neighborhood board yes. as representatives. Am I? I don't know You're, what percent or. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about the percentage, but you are absolutely correct. And, and I think that just goes to show that what the neighborhood boards represent. I mean, it's really the eyes and ears of the community. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the pulse of the community, and. In these meetings, not only do you get to know about who your elected officials are, but you also become educated as to the actual structure and process of government, yeah. which for anyone who wants to effectuate change, it's necessary to know the structure yeah. and process. So. Yeah, and, and it's not just, it's, it's not just a, a bottom-up, but it's a top-down, too, because mm -hmm. our representatives will come and they'll tell us, I'm working on this bill in the legislature, or if you want to submit a bill, here's the deadline for this, or so it's it's the communication is flowing both ways yes. in this and mm -hmm. you know when the police come and they say how many people they cited for noise violations which is not enough mm -hmm. um, in my humble opinion <laughs> but that's a, you mentioned noise mm -hmm. and in two weeks time just as a preview I hope to have the quieter Oahu people on who, who will discuss that but uh, they the fire department comes and says how many structures burned mm -hmm. and they have tips on you know yes. don't do this or do that don't mm -hmm. overload your uh, your your uh, mm -hmm. uh, circuit breaker type things uh, so we get a lot of information there as well and mm -hmm. um, I, I some meetings are really well attended and others not as well attended mm -hmm. depending on the topic of the day so you got a wonderful website I have to say and it's uh, uh, people can go to it and how do they get to your website before we take a break so in case they want to take a break while we're uh, sure right now. please visit us www.honolulu.gov slash nco uh, honolulu.gov slash slash nco, NCO. Mm -hmm. or they could just go to honolulu.gov and, navigate. and then navigate down mm -hmm. through it's off it's actually the office of the mayor yes and then uh it's so under it's the that executive tab. office of the mayor and then they got a toggle mm -hmm. over and down or you can just google neighborhood commission office honolulu and, it, and that'll Better. take you right there yeah there are many paths to that so well i uh, yeah and so we've been around for 40 years you said or almost 40 or uh, maybe more. a little bit over uh, started in 73. 73 so it's approaching quite a while that we've got here and um and i think that so we've got about 450 people, I think, elected to these boards. It's 437. It's 437. Mm -hmm. Some are more competitive than others. Sure. Some have some open seats mm -hmm. available. Others, you've got a whole bunch of people wanting to be mm -hmm. on the board. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it's interesting just, just to see the different levels of passion and uh, um, you know, decorum that, that happens. But I think, mm -hmm. by and large, people are respectful of each other. And we have some really yes. great... Um, 
uh, materials that I that I uh, I have come uh, that I will come out with in a minute here. So some best practices that people can follow. So when they go to the neighborhood board, they'll know kind of what's going on there yeah. because not everyone is familiar with parliamentary procedure or how things are even organized. So sure. uh, it's always a very short time that, <laughs> that we have on the show, but uh, we will be taking a very short break here. I'm Winston Welch. This is Out and About Live on the Think Tech uh, Streaming Network series, and we are talking today with Sean Hamamoto from the neighborhood. Uh, commission office, and we'll be back in a minute to talk more about the upcoming elections for neighborhood boards. And it is all neighborhood boards, so if you're on the board or you want to be on the board, it doesn't matter. you got to reapply right now. You have about three weeks to do it and get it in. So we'll be back in a minute. Thank you. Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Aloha, we are back and we're live, and I am Winston Welch, and this is Out and About on the ThinkTech live streaming network series, where every other week we talk with people who fuel the events organizations uh, in our city, state, and nation. Today we are delighted to have Sean Hamamoto back from the Neighborhood Commission Office in Honolulu, which is, uh, it's not unique to Honolulu, I don't think. Um, I don't know how many other cities have something like Actually, this? Actually, it's quite unique. Um, you know, in doing some research, well, obviously, um, this neighborhood board system, we are the only county in the state of Hawaii yep. that has such a system. And actually, even in, in looking um, at the mainland, I found less than a handful of similar types uh, systems. So I think we're actually um, very lucky to have such a system. Oh, really? Oh, okay. um, I can tell you um, some other countries have even contacted us inquiring about our system. Uh, yeah. Just last year, we had... Um, uh, municipality in Canada contact us to see about how we do things uh, in terms of neighborhood boards. We actually had an intern from the Ukraine last year who specifically requested to visit our neighborhood board system because as you know the Ukraine they're going through some um, political transformation and she thought that it was so great that we had a system where the public can have a voice. So she wanted to take that idea back to the Ukraine. And it is great because, mm -hmm. you know, what's, if we don't have this, the next stop is having to go down to the city council mm -hmm. uh, hearing on whatever committee it is, and you mm -hmm. have to find that, that small thing. And they're, they're dealing with a big bill rather exactly. than considering a lot of different opinions before that bill even gets written. True. Uh, so it's, mm -hmm. uh, by that time, it's, it's kind of a little bit late. So the, our, our system is very good mm -hmm. in, in having this. I didn't realize that it was so rare but i know mm -hmm. talking with my friends on the neighbor islands they don't have this and so you think about a county like hawaii and i don't know how many neighborhood uh, how many uh, county commissioners there are but let's say they have 10 mm -hmm. you know that's just 10 voices for you know mm -hmm. half a million people or whatever it is mm -hmm. so we are lucky to have a lot of people who maybe will champion a cause for mm -hmm. us on the neighborhood board they might come and they might they might be concerned with noise or light mm -hmm. pollution or um, traffic safety or Getting even a bus stop, talking with the DTS people about saying it doesn't make sense there, it makes more mm -hmm. sense here. And those little things that, that only a local would know, and uh, it's, 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 that's why I, I do love the neighborhood board system. And, and it really just goes towards improving our day-to-day -day quality of life. Yeah, and it, mm -hmm. and it does, and things are slow sometimes, I mean, and, and it's not with the neighborhood mm -hmm. commission, right? Mm -hmm. You have a hard-working staff of how many people? Uh, altogether, we've got about 13. 13, okay. And we cover the whole island. Okay, yeah. and you guys have to go out to these 33 neighborhood <laughs> boards once a month. The, and mostly, uh, you got a lot of young people, I know, but you have some kupunas in there, too, yes. so they're able to offer their wisdom mm -hmm. and experience, and I know the young people are just probably, their heads pop off by the end of the night thinking, <laughs> oh, my goodness. But uh, so uh, let's go to our next slide, which is the neighborhood board elections, some facts on this. So who can vote? you got to be 18 by February 15th. Mm -hmm. you got to... Uh, 
and you can be a legal resident alien so you don't have to be a citizen correct Okay. So very inclusive system. Very inclusive system. So you can just go to honolulu.gov slash NCO and see which district and sub-district you're a member of. Mm -hmm. So mine, I think mine has three. Mm -hmm. Others have five or, or more, mm -hmm. um, depending on what it is. Uh, so the elections will begin the 26th of April and end the 17th of May. Mm -hmm. um, you'll be giving out voting passcodes, or you can request paper, as Sean has already said. Um, Oh, so people could actually go down to your headquarters at uh, Kapalama Hale or Kapolei Hale and vote there if they didn't yes, have a computer. Yes, in addition, um, we are working with the state library system okay. so ask that, us, and as ask. we did in the last election, so you could go to any state library and use their computer and that's a voting station too. So we do really want to accommodate as many people and we are um, sensitive to the fact that not everybody may have a computer or mm -hmm. access. So we're very happy and thankful for the state library system for I supporting we, us. We couldn't get the, uh, and yes, uh, the library is a great resource that we I often forget about. I, w I wonder if we could get it put in the phone book, you know, in front of the tsunami guides and that sort oh. of thing, <laughs> just like put in this. But they already have that for voter registration. But a lot of people might ask, why don't we have it at the same time as the state and county elections that happen? Yeah, you know, you bring up a good point. So that's something that we've discussed um, quite uh, thoroughly at the commission level. There's two, two schools of thoughts. We actually did approach the state. I know previously they've done that. Um, and I just think from a logistics standpoint, the, the state was hesitant because if you think about the ballot, yeah. right, we have 400 and, and how to, and these, the neighborhood board districts don't match up perfectly with the state district boundaries. Oh, yes. and it could be a nightmare. It would be a nightmare. So there's that. Um, but the one thing I look at as a positive, I mean, to me, there's positives and negative, but by the neighborhood boards having their elections on odd number of years, that's the only show in town. They get all the attention. It, it's just a matter of people, um, and especially our office, trying to bring it to people's attention. Have you thought about sending out postcards that is tear off one side and, and, and go back on the other and say, okay, for candidate profiles, you have to go online, but send back this postcard with your, your checked mark and your signature? Actually, uh, uh, let me uh, dovetail this into my next point. So we have been thinking of ways to you know, make registration easier and mm -hmm. so forth. So actually using technology, um, what I'm very happy about and excited about is for the first time, people can now register to be a candidate via their smartphone. We, okay. we set up a texting platform where people can register you know, smartphone or tablet. People, all, all they have to do is to text GOLNCO, that's G-O-N-C-O, into 95577, and of course, uh, standard text uh, rates will apply. But basically, if you opt into this uh, text platform, you'll get a link immediately that takes you right to our website, and you can actually register as a candidate right from your phone. It'll take a few minutes. So very attractive, especially for millennials that are used mm -hmm. to dealing with everything on the phone. Yes. Go and CO to 95577. 95577. Okay, so we got a lot of resources on the page, and we're just going to have time to go through these very sure. quickly. But uh, for our next uh, slide, it's not a slide, but uh, this is a snapshot of your website here. So over on the left, you have information about the Neighborhood Commission Office on the upper left. Then this is about neighborhood boards and the resources they have. So there's a member guidebook. You guys have a big uh, informational system. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 you collect everyone together in Memorial Hall and tell them this is what you have to do. You yes. have to sign up for sunshine training videos and mm -hmm. sign the form and take the Pledge of Allegiance and mm -hmm. swear mm -hmm. your uh, oath to put, uphold the Constitution of the United States and the state of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of really great <laughs> member graphics in there, which I don't know that I had seen before, and I just wanted to touch on a couple of those, but the next slide has about neighborhood boards on there and where you can go to get uh, maybe the next one after that. We've got some, uh, oh, maybe it didn't make it up there, but it's, the, yes, that one, thank you. The So you can go on there and find out agendas, yes. minutes, board schedules. You mm -hmm. can sign up to get them there. So if you're mm -hmm. on a borderline, you could get two or three. If you want, um, sure. Or you could get everybody's uh, agendas and minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, there's all kinds of resources on that page. You can see when it's broadcast on Olelo. 
um, your boundary districts and all of that. So, uh, also very important, board contact information, how to get in touch with your board members. Okay. Um, we have board chairs, so um, they're required to leave one type of uh, contact information. Okay. So either via email or phone, you can contact your board representatives and talk to them directly about your concerns. Okay, and we've, we've mm -hmm. also, so, and it just, it's just the board member, board chair members, not the individuals. Actually, no, the whole board. The whole board the is whole there, board okay, is so you can email me on there. Uh, <laughs> if you don't want to email me at Think Tech Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, We've got some really great infographics there, which I think should be just for basic people, for any board members, but it's know the parliamentary law, be respectful of who comes before the board, participate, wait to be recognized, keep informed, refrain from side conversations, um, you know, write resolutions for yourself, um, call for the question when you believe enough discussion has gone through. These meetings happen very fast, they're like two hours, you know, they're supposed mm -hmm. to keep it under two and a half hours, but mm -hmm. people are fatiguing by a certain period of time. <laughs> Um, being a chair, of course, anybody can be the chair who is on the board, mm -hmm. and the board, the first order of the business of a new board is to elect the chair. Yes, elected by his or her peers. Yes. His or her peers, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, uh, yes, and, and it's not an easy job because you have to be impartial, you have to uh, prepare your agenda, know the rules, you've got to be firm but gentle, you've, yes. got, to, you've got to rule with some aloha there, but mm -hmm. if someone's just you know, going on and on and or, or acting without aloha, you mm -hmm. have the ability and the right and the obligation to kind of say, yeah, you know. Well, they can expel them from the meeting. You're going to mm -hmm. be expelled from the meeting. Mm -hmm. I haven't had it happen. And then this is, of course, the time for people to come in and talk, mm -hmm. uh, to, to air their, their grievances, their complaints, their concerns, mm -hmm. their comments, and their... Uh, uh, their thanks to different people as well, yes. um, and and to and speak directly to their representatives. So every after every representative talks, there's a chance for the board to talk, and then for the members of the community to talk directly to those representatives. So it's a it's a you know, of course you could call them up on the phone as well. Uh, we have other best practices on there, and then uh, some best practices for if you're on the board, and then finally um, we've got the last one on there because I think we're. A little short on time, which is the duties of the neighborhood assistants. Um, so the neighborhood assistants are these uh, men and women that go out and mm -hmm. they basically uh, take all the minutes of the board. They make sure that the that everything's set up and prepared. They make sure the uh, work with the chair to make the agendas are filed on time in accordance with state sunshine law. Yep. Uh, they also advise the chair in running the meeting properly um, to follow. Uh, Robert's Rules Parliamentary Procedure. So they do a lot, and I'm very lucky that I have a great staff, uh, very committed to the mission. Yep, yep. And I know they enjoy working with the boards. Uh, well, you know, it's, 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 it's hard work, but it's probably gratifying work because mm -hmm. they're really just touching the pulse of, of the city. And, yes. and I give a shout out to Thomas, who is our um, neighborhood board assistant, and he's, he's great and just, just right on top of everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like you would want someone to be really dedicated mm -hmm. uh, public servant. And uh, that's that's heartening to see that, especially, you know, um, in an age when we, uh, well, people could, they don't they don't have to be like that. But in in our case, I think we had Russell before that, who was also very conscientious mm -hmm. about that. And so, uh, and then they have a lot of information when they go back and have to transcribe everything and make sure that everything is filed right. And they participate in the election process as well. Yes. So. Maybe in the future we can get some postcards where we can mail them back in and vote. I don't know how we increase participation, but if we're up to 20,000 now, it was at 40. Yeah. Uh, as we get the word out, maybe we can uh, figure out some way that your staff can do some electronic well, marketing. Or maybe I can come back again during the voting period to help remind people to go out and vote too. I'd, Absolutely. Be, I'd be happy to come back. Absolutely. Before <laughs> our elections, we will have you back here to okay. talk about that and some maybe some specific topics that do come up. In all the boards, I'd and, be and happy because mm -hmm. those do come uh, come up a lot, and it's uh, it's really great that that you. I, I think you probably enjoy your work a lot. I love it. Yeah, I love it. And and you got mm -hmm. uh, you got a great staff. You are housed in uh, Kapalamahale. Kapalamahale. So um, right by Costco yes. makes it easy when you finish work and can <laughs> pop over there and get stuff. We are unfortunately out of time, Sean, but uh, it's it's a delight to have you on the show to talk about this very mm -hmm. basic. Um, system of democracy in our city that is a template that we have learned today really for uh, the rest of the country and the world yes. at a time when people really need to say I don't like whatever or they should do something about you know who they is it's you so if you're watching you are they so when you say they should do something about they look in the mirror and point that finger and that is you and the way that you do that is 
you get out there, you start your YouTube channel, you go to your neighborhood board office, you call the mayor, you call your senator, whatever it is, or you start your nonprofit or you stand out with a sign and whatever it is you want to do. But it is up to you to be a participant in this society as best as you can do. And this is one way that you can do it. Unfortunately, we are out of time here for this one, so we have to wrap it up. I am Winston Welch. This is Out and About on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series, and we are delighted to have been talking with Sean Hamamoto, who is the Executive Secretary of the Honolulu Neighborhood Commission Office. For more information, go to honolulu.gov slash NCO, um, or just Google Honolulu Neighborhood Commission Office. So thanks for tuning in. We welcome your feedback. Thanks especially to our broadcast engineer, Robert McLean, our floor manager, Eric Cal Calander, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts it all together. I will see you uh, every other Monday at 3 p.m. for more of Out and About on ThinkTech Hawaii. Aloha, everyone.